Hi, I'm James McGuire, and on today's eSpeaks, we're talking about artificial intelligence and AI voice assistants, how the growth in AI is driving greater choices and more sophistication in the market for voice assistants. It's not just about Siri and Alexa anymore. To discuss that, I'm joined by John Gosha, founder and CEO at Nader Voice. John, very good to have you with us today. James, great to be here. Thanks for having me on. So obviously there's a lot going on with AI this year, but ever since ChatGPT debuted at the end of last year, it's been almost kind of a semi hysteria. Uh, what, what do you see as AI is growing so quickly this year? What, what are a couple of key trends you see driving the market? Yeah, it's pretty unbelievable. Every day you have to wake up and spend an hour or two just catching up on what's happened. Right. So certainly is, is moving quickly, but you know, the piece that I find most interesting is, you know, now we can talk to a data set, whether that be a document, a book, a set of documents, a database. And so that unstructured data, we can now have a conversation with. And so I think about where all those data, uh, you know, depositories lie and, you know, a corporation has a lot of, uh, you know, documents and information that might be in different places. And so, uh, you know, that's kind of an interesting area. All of us have our own data, right? We have emails and text messages and, and documents. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that being able to talk to a specific set of data, say you wanna ask a question of a set of reviews when you're on Amazon, or you wanna ask a, a question of a product, uh, of a website, of a particular company. So I think there's some uh, really interesting consumer use cases, but also for the enterprise. And so uh, you know, every company I know is now talking about and thinking about, you know, how do we allow our internal knowledge uh, to be more accessible by our employees, but also how do we allow our products and services to be more accessible to our customers? And so I follow, you know, where's the data? And I don't mean just big databases, but, you know, documents and text. And you know now we can interact with those and ask questions in a very unstructured way. And so those are the pieces that you know I see you know heating up first. There's a lot more to come, but that's the you know the area that's getting a lot of attention and and that we paid attention to. Yeah, I think that whole area of being able to talk to to a system, actually use your voice and speak with it, does change our, our relationship with computers so so dramatically. I think about it's really sort of like the democratization of of, of AI in that it used to be just accessible only a few data scientists or real experts and now every single person can now talk to their system in one way or another yeah it's it's pretty incredible the uh the way it changed the interaction you know, the example that you know i think about is you know i might read a book and uh, others will read that same book and you know you'll have a couple key takeaways or when you're reading an article you'll skim down to just the pieces you want so consuming information you know there's a lot of things that we don't take away and so there's a lot of noise and I compare that to, you know, having a conversation with someone, you can ask a question and you can drill down and ask more questions about that or come up and ask about a different topic and drill down. And so that method of being able to get what you want, find out the information is now possible with you know, books and other texts. And so now you don't have to consume and go through all the noise to get to the piece that you want. And so I think it'll fundamentally change, you know, how we learn, how we, you know, consume knowledge. And that's, that's pretty interesting. Oh, yeah, fascinating, really. So I, I know you're really close to the AI voice assistant market. So how do you see AI's role with voice assistants evolving these days? So I think it's going to be transformative. And, you know, I, I, I hear a lot that, oh, you know, uh, the voice assistants aren't that smart. They, they don't do a great job. Um, you know, we all have that frustrating moment where you're asking Alexa or Siri for something and they respond, you know, I don't understand or I can't do that. Right. And so, you know, I think that will fundamentally change. Uh, I was speaking to one of my advisors, Larry Heck, who ran speech at Microsoft and became CEO of Samsung Bixby. Uh, he's now at Georgia Tech. And he said, John, you know, I remember walking around the campus of Microsoft with Adam Shire, the founder of Siri, and this is before Apple bought them. And they were talking about how the big innovation 10 years ago was speech to text. We could take what someone was saying and get it accurately in the text at a rate 95% or greater. And so that gave us Alexa, that gave us Siri, that gave us Google, that innovation. What's happened today is now with large language models, we can now understand what the person means. What's the essence? of what they're truly asking for. And so today you have to learn how to talk to a voice assistant. Uh, you have to learn the commands it can do. 
But now with large language models, you know, you'll be able to speak much more freely um, and it'll understand what you want. And so I, I think that there will be less of a structure kind of categorization system and something that's much more broad that you can, um, you know, have a much more fluid conversation with. So that's the first piece that I think we'll experience in voice assistance that will change. Let me ask you one, one about a question about that. And is that because the large language models are being trained by us with all of all of our various speech patterns? Like, what is making them more versatile? Yeah, so I, I think maybe a good comparison is we've all gone to uh, you know, ChatGPT or you know one of the other uh, large language models, and we, have, we put a piece of text in and we ask it to summarize it. So it's very good at summarizing information. And you can even say, you know, give me it in two words, and I'll grab the best two words that describes you know a whole page of text. So we've all have experienced that. But what it's doing is it's able to you know find the words that you are getting at the intention, the essence of what the person has said. And so I'll give you an example where a small investor of ours is Chick-fil-A and uh, we have some recordings from the drive-through. And, you know, if you think, you know, ever listen to yourself or someone else ordering, you know, Chick-fil-A, you know, it's, oh, I want a spicy chicken sandwich, actually no pickles. Oh, actually make that a combo, this, this, and that. And it's all over the place. Right. A year ago, we couldn't ingest that. We couldn't understand what the person wanted. Today, with a large language model, we can ask it and say, okay, what does this person really want? And it gives us the exact order of they want spicy chicken sandwich, no pickles, this modification, this and that. And now we can ingest that into a two-layer system where we have kind of your traditional voice assistant with a large language model on the front end, understanding what you actually wanted. And so it's uh, you know, very good at summarization, which is you know, very you know, similar to getting at the, the intent of what someone wants. Mm -hmm. All right, so that, that's, that's the summarization. What, what else about how AI's role with voice assistance is evolving? So, you know, one, uh, you know, there's the front end, of course, with the large language model, um, but also the back end. They'll be able to respond to you more naturally. So those things are great, but what about kind of the, the meat in between? And so what we see there is using vector sensors, uh, you know, vector databases, um, you know, I guess I could think of these as kind of small language models. Um, where you can take a set of data and you can talk to it like we were uh, discussing earlier, but you don't need to train that model. You don't need to train that data. And so I'll give you an example. We have been working with a, a large um, audio library, the largest library of audio um, content in the world. And they have 92,000 stations. And you, you might ask this library, oh, I want to hear, you know, something that is similar to Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin in some small little town in, um, you know, in the Pacific Northwest. And, you know, it'll know that, okay, well, those artists are, you know, rock artists because on the internet, their names appear with the word rock many times. And it'll also know that that little town you might've mentioned is near Seattle. And not because it knows geography, it's not, you know, querying Google Maps. It just knows that Seattle appears close to that word in, in the, on, you know, on the internet. And I'll come back with, you know, here's a rock station in Seattle you might like. Yeah. And so we never had to train it to know where Seattle was or to train it that those artists are rock artists. It's able to understand that because it has the large language model, um, you know, in the background running. And so it'll be able to give you better responses um, based on, you know, descriptions that are maybe less specific. Interesting. Well, let, let, let's drill down to, to, to native voice. How, how is native voice serving the voice assistant needs of its customers? What, what, what is a native voice advantage, John? Yeah, so when we talk about our customer, I mean, our customer first and foremost is the end user. And, you know, we want to help the end user get more done throughout their day simply by using their voice. And, you know, I think it's interesting that you and I, we use our eyes, our ears, and our mouth to communicate with one another. You know, even here, some of the um, communication is body language, most of it's audio. Sure. But I think it's strange that we've been interacting with computers using our fingers for decades with mice and keyboards and, and touch screens. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there are certain things that the consumer wants faster, easier. So you can go from having something on the tip of your tongue to having it in your ears if it's a piece of audio content or requesting a product or a service. And so that's where we're focused is on that, that end user. But this is really about building an ecosystem where I have confidence that Uber will build the best experience for calling a car and Starbucks for coffee 
et cetera. And so, you know, those brands, when they focus in their area of expertise, I'm learning they do a better job. So they bring a better experience to the end user. Mm -hmm. But also for the end user, we all have brands that we know and trust. Um, you know, you go to Uber for a car, you don't Google a car, for example. Sure. And so when you have more guidance as to what you can do with a particular brand, it makes it easier to interact with a voice assistant. You don't have that white sheet of paper problem like we had with the general voice assistants where you say, well, what can it do? You know, I just don't know. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you know, native voice, we're allowing brands to bring these incredible conversational AIs to market and connecting them on our network of millions of devices. So they're available for you and I as we're you know, walking down the street with our earbuds in or driving in our car. How does the native voice interact with, say, Siri or, or Alexa, if, if at all? Yep. Uh, we have the major assistants on our platform. Uh, of course, uh, Alexa, uh, Google, and Siri. And so uh, we give you choice so you can talk to whichever assistant you might, might prefer or might do the best job. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we also bring multiple conversational AIs or voice assistants alongside them. And so you were able to have the greatest amount of choice, but you know, talk to Alexa if you want to find out where your package is, but you can also ask iHeart to you know, play your favorite artist or your favorite station. And so uh, we give you the ability to you know, choose which voice assistant or conversational AI is best for that particular job, that particular task. So someone is actually looking at a menu of choices and they might choose a Siri or Alexa or, or iHeart? Correct. So yeah, a quick user story is so one of our uh, great customers is Skull Candy Headphones, the second largest uh, or second best selling headphone in the country. And so if you buy a pair of Skull IQ headphones from Skull Candy, pop them in your ears, you download the app and the app, you can simply turn on and say, yes, I want to have Alexa. I want to have iHeart. I want to have, you know, Hey Skull Candy, et cetera. Right. And so next time you want to go on a run, you leave your phone in your pocket, put your earbuds in your ears. And you can say, hey, iHeart, play a running playlist. And as you're running, if you see clouds rolling in, you can say, you know, hey, Alexa, you know, is it going to rain today? Um, and all in this seamless experience with uh, you know, your head up, don't have your phone, you know, in front of you, uh, you know, burying um, yourself in uh, that screen time. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, that experience is, is what we enable for the, the end user. That's neat. So I, I think the big picture is, is the future of AI and the voice assistant. I, I know it's going to get extremely capable in the years ahead. Uh, what, what are some key milestones you think we can see in the next, oh, say half decade or, or so, if you look that, that far out? Yeah, so you know, in the near term, we talked about just being able to get what you want faster, um, be able to ask a question and avoid all the noise, get the answer, dig deeper. And so um, you know, I think that certainly is happening today. I do think that every application, every app, every website will be rebuilt in a way that is custom to you. It doesn't have to be a structured where today, if you go to buy a product, you look at the product and then you go and need to put in your shipping information and then your credit card. And there's this kind of process and tree. Well, conversationally, you don't need to have all that structure. Um, you can say, you know, yeah, I want to you know, now put in my credit card number or I want to do this piece next. You kind of go in any order that you'd like. And so I think that we will fundamentally change how we interact with our products, our services, you know, our apps and our websites. And so I think that they will be designed custom to us um, and we can interact with them in a way that's you know, very flexible and, and customized. And so I think that will uh, you know, certainly be a second big trend. A third one and the last one I'll mention that is really interesting to me is our personal data. Um, you know, if you uh, think about all your emails, all your text messages, you know, all your documents, I'm a big advocate of personal ownership and control of our data. I think that'll be one of our greatest assets into the future. But, uh, you know, with all that information, you know, we can learn a lot about ourselves. Um, we can, you know, get insights on different decisions. We can share access to uh, you know others and, and our knowledge. And so if you think about someone you know well, you know, maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a sibling, you know, ask themselves, a, you know, ask yourself a question in your head of that person right now. And you can hear that person respond in a way they would probably respond. And their tone, you can actually hear them. Right. Well, the reason for that is you have all this experience with that person. And now you can, you know, pattern match in your head and have a pretty good idea what they're going to say. But now that we have conversational AI and we have you know, large language models, our personal data 
we'll be able to access our own knowledge and other people's knowledge in ways that we never were able to do before. You know, usually when we all pass away, we, you know, take a lot of our experience, a lot of our knowledge with us, unless we wrote a paper, wrote a book or have an apprentice. And so I think with all of our data now, knowledge will be carried forward in a way that has never been possible uh, for humanity, but also all that information on us, we'll be able to get better products, better services, because we understand ourselves much better. And with permission, the companies that are serving us can understand us as well. And so that's something that I look at, you know, five years or, or longer from now, that will be a, a real change in the way we interact with knowledge and, and customization. It's an interesting idea. It's almost sci-fi. It's almost like we're, we're going to be talked to a, a recording of, you know, grandpa, so to speak, and, he, and his, his voice assistant, we continue to talk with us, even though he himself is no longer with us. Is that what you mean in terms of personal data? Yeah, you, you, you could do that. I think that's uh, definitely possible. But, um, you know, think about, you know, an expert that you don't have access to, uh, that you want to ask a question to, and they don't have time to answer everyone's question. Right. Um, so, you know, we're starting to break the boundaries of, of, of time and be able to share knowledge um, and access where we only are able to talk to people who are within our, our reach. Um, but if, you know, someone has all their, you know, all their personal information, the personal AI, you know, we can learn from them. Uh, we can get advice or you can ask, you know, not just one person, you can ask a thousand people that have something in common and, and see what, what that, what they say. So I think it'll fundamentally change how we share knowledge, um, and how we retain knowledge. Hmm. That, that, that is really interesting. John, I think you said it, a lot of good stuff. It's going to be a fascinating sector to watch in the years ahead. I uh, hope you come back and talk with us again sometime. Thanks, well, thank you for having me.